Um, the first cranial nerve we're going to look at today is cranial nerve 12. And here you can see the medulla right in here. Here would be the pons. And I'm picking up these little rootlets right here of the 12th cranial nerve. And this would be on the left side. So here are the rootlets of 12. And you can see that medial to the rootlets is a fiber bundle called the pyramid, which is comprised of cortical spinal fibers. And lateral to the pyramid, right here, you see this bulge here called the inferior olive. Now don't forget, these rootlets join together to go through the hypoglossal canal to innervate the intrinsic, extrinsic muscles of the tongue. Now cranial nerve 11 has a spinal and a cranial part. You can see the cranial part right here going to the larynx. Now this is going to be running with cranial nerve 10 and its cells of origin are in nucleus ambiguous. The spinal part you can see coming up here has the cells of origin in the spinal cord from C1 to C5 or 6 and it runs forward through the foramen magnum, loops around and goes out the jugular foramen. Rostrally you can see all the rootlets of the vagus, you can see how lots of those right here. And you can see a little, little bump here some granulated material. This is some choroid plexus that is actually sticking out of the foramen alushka, and that's always a good indicator for the ninth nerve, which is just behind it. Further rostrally, we can see the big, thick auditory vestibular nerve. In front of that, we see the seventh nerve, which has an intermediate part, right caudal, and a motor part a little further rostral. So this would be seven, eight, nine just by the choroid plexus, big 10, cranial 11, spinal 11, and then we saw earlier, we saw the rootlets of 12. Moving rostrally, here we have at the junction of the medulla and the pons, we have the sixth cranial nerve, abducens. The cell bodies lie in the abducens nucleus, which is in the pons and its axons run out to innervate the lateral rectus. Little rostral and lateral, we have the big cranial nerve five. The more medial fibers would be the motor part for muscles of mastication. The more lateral part would be the sensory, which of course has the cell bodies in the trigeminal ganglion. Here we have the fourth cranial nerve, the trochlear. This would be the right side, this would be the left. You can see that these nerves exit dorsally behind the inferior colliculi. They go out to innervate the superior oblique muscle. Remember now, this right trochlear nerve has its cells of origin in the left trochlear nucleus. Third cranial nerve comes out the ventral surface of the midbrain. Here you can see the cerebroaqueduct and the superior colliculi, these little bumps here. Here's the fibrous cerebropeduncle. Here's the substantia nigra. Here would be the ruber duber right here on each side. And we can see there's a little cell group right here called the third nucleus, two parts of this. The somatic part comes down. Here's part of the third nerve. Somatic part goes out to the eye muscles, all except lateral rectus and superior oblique. And the visceral efferent part starts in the edinger westphal nucleus, also goes just along here in the ventral surface with the rootlets to form cranial nerve three. 